Hello YouTube, this is Terrell from Terrell03.com. This is my website and my YouTube channel has been deleted and the videos connected to this Bible section, they're the ones that are being remade first. I've made the two Gospels, the two churches. Now we're going to get into the four baptisms of the New Testament to help you to separate the water ministry of Jesus Christ from the blood ministry of Jesus Christ. I alluded to in the first instructional video. Okay, this is again the link will be be provided down below in the description box. You can also get this at terrello3.com. This is my post. It was written in 2010, and this is a little more content than the last two videos. I'm going to have to kind of hurry through it, but you can stop the video. You can go check the links and. Do your own investigation. Always do your own investigation. Every word of God must be interpreted. Now what I'm showing you is God's code. Spirit, blood, and water. That's the code. Spirit witnesses, blood witnesses, water witnesses. And we are going to be looking at three baptisms here that are water witnesses. Water witnesses. We're going to be looking at one baptism for us today that is a blood witness. That's how we are baptized into Christ, having nothing to do with water, having nothing to do with the gospel of the kingdom. Okay, so let's begin. Four baptisms of the New Testament. There are three baptisms for the gospel of the kingdom and just one baptism for Paul's word of the cross gospel message, described as gospel number two. And there are links to these posts inside of the posts. The gospel of the kingdom is gospel number one through which God gathers the prophetic kingdom bride, described as church number one, here. So those two posts in the previous two videos are linked right here above. Now this is, this is a very important story with Apollos. He's a member of the kingdom bride. That's why you see him running around baptizing people. And let's read about what happens in Acts chapter 19, start at verse 1. And it happened that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the upper country and came to Ephesus and found some disciples. He said to them, see notice they're disciples. Paul never uses the word in his in his 13 epistles to the Gentiles, the members of Christ's body. He is instructing and he is baptizing disciples into the kingdom. He is preaching both gospels according to the will of God. Some are called to become members of Kingdom Bride. Some are called to become members of Christ's body. Two different, totally different dispensations. And these are the messages. That's the two Gospels. These are the two churches. And now we're discovering that there are different baptisms for both of them. And hopefully we're able to separate what's going on here. So he says to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And he said to him, No, we have not heard of whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, Into what then were you baptized? And he said, Into John's baptism. That's baptism number one. Paul said, John baptized with baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in him who was coming after him, that is in Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. See, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Why? Because they already had Baptism number one. Paul's showing them the way into the Holy of Holies by giving them the second and the third baptisms for the gospel of the kingdom. And when Paul had laid hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. That's baptism number three. And they began speaking with tongues and prophesying. That's what king disciples do. They speak in tongues and prophecy. They did back in Paul's day. Now there are three baptizing baptisms depicting a passage or the way through these three sections of the tabernacle of Moses in the temple. There are diagrams here that you can look at. For the disciples of the, of the prophetic kingdom bride to access the Holy of Holies and receive the Holy Spirit. However, Paul's mystery body of Christ receives only one baptism that is done by the Holy Spirit himself. Paul writes, There is one body and one spirit, just as also you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, 
one God and Father who is over all and through all and in all. Ephesians 4. Now, Scripture is describing three separate baptisms in the in the first series of verses in Acts 19, 1 through 6. These events become more dramatic when we realize they that they occur about six years after Peter and Paul's famous meeting in Jerusalem, or in about 56 AD. That means that these kingdom disciples traveled the countryside for about 25 years, and with only knowing the baptism of John. But they're still called disciples. You see, that's how the passage began. Then, after hearing the good news about Jesus Christ and His coming, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, the second baptism. That gets them into the holy place of the temple between the two veils. And yet, these disciples had not even heard of Christ nor the Holy Spirit, and obviously did not receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then, when Paul laid hands upon them, they received the gift of the Holy Spirit and began speaking with tongues. The writer of Acts is quoting Paul here in describing three individual and completely separate baptisms for the gospel of the kingdom. This is in full agreement with Christ's great commission commands to kingdom disciples. He says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always and to the end of the age. And he says to them, Go to all the world and preach the gospel. Now this is in Mark chapter 16. Paul hadn't received his gospel yet. Peter's going to continue to preach repentance and baptism because he's preaching the gospel of the kingdom. This is the gospel that Peter would, John and James would continue to preach to the end. Go and preach the gospel to all creation. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved, but he who has disbelieved shall be condemned. Baptism is a command. It's vital. Three of them. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for kingdom disciples. Because these three separate baptisms are divided this way. Of the Father, that's John's baptism. Baptism in water. See, the Spirit of the Father is reaching across with the water. Two witnesses holding hands. Jesus Christ stands underneath that holding of the hands. He says, I did not recognize them, but he who sent me to baptize in water said to me, he upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining upon him, this is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Baptism number three, the Holy Spirit. You see? Now, the, of the Son is the second one, the second baptism of the Gospel of the Kingdom. Under number two there. Then number three is of the Holy Spirit, third and final. And when Paul laid hands upon them, that's when they received, Acts 19.6. These disciples were shown the way again into the Holy of Holies. Now there's a similar account in Acts chapter 8. Now let's look at that. But when they believed Philip preaching the good news about the kingdom of God, that's the gospel of the kingdom, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you see they got the first and the second here. They were baptized, men and women alike. But when the, the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word, they sent them Peter and John who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit for he had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had simply been baptized, number one, in water, and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, baptism number two. But they then they began laying hands on them, and they were receiving the Holy Spirit, one, two, three. These were also shown the way. The difference is, these uh, Samarians, they were running around with the first two baptisms without the third. And at chapter 19, those disciples ran around with just John's baptism, and received the second two together. They did not go and find water. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Son. And then laying of hands gave it to the Holy Spirit. So that's the difference. Okay, so um, next we see under Paul's gospel, we are baptized into the body of Christ on the cross at Calvary at the moment we believe. This is totally different. Now I'm describing the fourth baptism, which is our only baptism. It is through the power of God, through Paul's gospel, that we become active participants in Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. There is none of that with the gospel of the kingdom. That's what we get through our one baptism. It's spiritual. It's done by the Holy Spirit. All of these words above, well, first of all, let me read Romans 6. Many misinterpret this is what's happening here, as if there's water. There's no water here. 
Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ, baptism into Christ means baptism into Christ, not baptism into water. Baptize him into Christ have been baptized into his death. This is not the Jordan River. This is Calvary. We've been baptized into his death. That's how we die. That's what makes us immune to sin, to the judgment of pen the penalty, the judgment of sin in the future, because we're dead. We die with Christ. God raises, he puts our sin on Christ and raises us from the dead as members of Christ's body. Remember, Peter, John, and James are members of the kingdom bride. They follow Christ around wherever he goes. Not us. We're the body of Christ. We are in him already. We're not going to a marriage supper of the Lamb. We're not, we do not have names in the Lamb's book of life. That sounds like heresy, doesn't it? It doesn't. We don't need it. We are in the Lamb now. Peter, John, and James, they have their names in the Lamb's book of life because they are going to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Revelation 19, start 5. You and I don't have that. We are in the Lamb now. Right now. Hey, there is no water in these verses at all. As members of His body, we died with Him on the cross. We were buried in His tomb and raised with Him and seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2, start at verse 4. Our lives are now hidden with Christ in God. Colossians 3, verse 3. Start at 1 and go to 4. Such glorious words there. Paul's one baptism into Christ's body is nothing like the three baptisms, the kingdom baptisms for the gospel of the kingdom. And they are to be understood totally separate from one another. Paul is seen preaching the three baptisms to the kingdom disciples in Acts 19 because he preached both the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of the grace of God. Luke's slant in Acts is in the direction of the three baptisms of the kingdom because this is account to Theophilus is a continuation of the Gospel of Luke concerning the kingdom. To apply these things to our seeming contradiction, there is one baptism for the members of Christ's body today. Those who seek to enter the kingdom of God on earth as disciples in the coming dispensation shall be baptized three times in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is the message that Elijah is going to preach when he gets here to restore all things. And that happens with our rapture. Those familiar with my project Black Star work, the Black Star came for Noah, it came for Moses. It's coming for the prophet of Acts 3, verse 22 and 23. That's Elijah. And we are going to be raptured, Those the members of Christ's body. This is the diagram I pulled up in the earlier video. Three sections of spirit, blood, and water. The water came first. The water gospel came first, but it was replaced. Spirit and then water are two circles. They overlap for the blood witness to be, be begotten. This begotten aspect is the dispensation of God's grace, the kingdom of His beloved Son. Second veil, first veil. So our gospel, this 2,000 year period that we're living in today, superseded the gospel of the kingdom period. So the, gospel, the kingdom actually came in with John the Baptist. It's now held in abeyance. The, the father sent John the Baptist. He was sent by God. John 1, 6, just like Christ. He who sent me to baptize in water. You see, so John the Baptist comes first. Christ comes second. The Holy Spirit baton was passed to the twelve on the day of Pentecost. Then Stephen, the account of Stephen, Stephen's name means crown. This is a rejection of the crown. The Jews killed Stephen with their own hands. This begins the slide. The early reigns bride, Peter, John, and James, they're cut off. Our dispensation of God's grace displaced the, the, grace, the kingdom dispensation. And now we are moving this way to this mark right here, the first veil of Scripture when the day of the Lord is at hand. That's when our trumpet sounds off. Satan and his minions are chained. We ascend to heaven and we take their places. We sit in heaven and then they become incarnate here at the end during the um, 70 weeks decree. So whenever the Holy Ones return with Christ in Matthew 24, that's us. And that's Peter, John, and James too after the marriage supper of the Lamb. Read Revelation 19 again. So this is my rendition of the four baptisms of the New Testament. And hopefully we can fix our, we can fix the same definitions for everything, and I will see you guys in the next video.